Hello everyone and welcome to an in-depth exploration of a topic that directly impacts the financial well-being of many Canadians. Today we're going to dive into something that often flies under the radar automatic monthly payments available to low-income individuals, particularly those who are recipients of old age security OAs or the Canada Pension Plan CPP. These payments are a lifeline for many seniors, designed to provide a basic income that can ease financial pressures, helping lift individuals out of poverty and ensure a more secure retirement. However, the eligibility requirements and process to access these benefits can be confusing and overwhelming, which is why we're here today to break it all down for you. We'll cover everything from who qualifies, how much you can receive, how to ensure you're enrolled, and much more. Whether you're currently receiving OAs or CPP benefits or know someone who is, this information could make a substantial difference in your monthly budget and overall financial security. Let's get started. The Canadian government has established several programs aimed at providing financial assistance to seniors living on low incomes. The three main programs we'll be focusing on today are the Guaranteed Income Supplement GIs, the Allowance, and the Allowance for the Survivor. Each of these programs is designed to support individuals in specific circumstances, ensuring that they have enough income to meet their basic needs. The GIS is a monthly payment provided to low-income OAS recipients, supplementing the basic OAS pension and ensuring that seniors have a minimum level of income to cover essential living expenses such as housing, food, and health care. This program is particularly crucial for single seniors or those who are divorced or widowed as it provides a significant boost to their monthly income. The allowance is designed for low-income individuals between the ages of 60 and 64 who are the spouse or common law partner of an OAS or CPP recipient. This payment helps bridge the financial gap for the lower income partner until they become eligible for OAS at age 65. The allowance ensures these individuals can maintain a decent standard of living while they await eligibility for their own retirement benefits. The allowance for the survivor is a monthly payment provided to low income individuals between the ages of 60 and 64 who have been widowed and whose deceased spouse was receiving OAS or CPP benefits. This payment is designed to support the surviving spouse during a particularly vulnerable time, helping them manage the financial challenges that often accompany the loss of a partner. All three of these programs are income tested, meaning your eligibility and the amount you receive are based on your total annual income. Understanding the income thresholds and how they apply to you is key to determining whether you qualify for these benefits. For the GIs, the income thresholds are as follows. If you're single, widowed, or divorced, your annual individual income must be below $19,464. If you're married or in a common law relationship, your combined annual income with your spouse or partner must be below $25,728. These income thresholds apply to the 2023 tax year and are typically adjusted annually to account for inflation. It's important to note that the income considered for GI's eligibility includes most sources of income, such as employment earnings, CPP, and RRSP withdrawals, but does not include OAS itself. The maximum monthly GS payment amounts for 2023 are $1,028.58 for single, widowed, or divorced individuals, $616.76 for a married or common law couple where only one person is receiving OAs, and $390.12 for a married or common law couple where both individuals are receiving OAs. These payments can make a substantial difference, especially when you consider that the basic OAS pension alone maxes out at just over $650 per month. The income thresholds for the allowance and allowance for the survivor are slightly higher than those for GIs. If you're the spouse or common law partner of an OAS or CPP recipient, your individual annual income must be below $25,776. If you're the surviving spouse or common law partner of an OAS or CPP recipient, your individual annual income must be below $25,776. The maximum monthly payment amounts for the allowance for the allowance for the survivor in 2023 are both $1,307.666. This payment can be a significant source of financial support, particularly for those who are dealing with the loss of a spouse and the accompanying financial strain. One of the most reassuring aspects of these programs is that you don't have to go through a cumbersome application process to receive these benefits. If you're already receiving OAS or CPP benefits and the government determines that you meet the income requirements, they will automatically enroll you in the GIs, Allowance or Allowance for the Survivor Programs. This means that once you are deemed eligible, the additional payments will start arriving either as direct deposits into your bank account or as checks, depending on how you receive your OAS and CPP payments. 
It's important to understand that the government will periodically reassess your eligibility for these programs, typically on an annual basis when you file your tax return. This reassessment is crucial because your income and living situation can change over time, which can impact your eligibility and the amount you receive. For instance, if your income increases and you no longer qualify for the full GI as allowance or allowance for the survivor, the government may reduce or stop the payments. Conversely, if your income decreases, you could become eligible and start receiving the payments. This is why it's essential to keep the government informed of any changes in your income, marital status, living arrangements, or other relevant factors. Failing to do so could result in you receiving overpayments that you would later have to pay back. For example, if your income increases one year to the point where you no longer qualify for the full GS payment and you don't notify the government of this change, they will continue sending you the maximum geese amount each month. But when they eventually catch on and recalculate your eligibility, you'll be on the hook for repaying all those excess payments. Managing your eligibility for these programs requires vigilance and proactive management of your financial situation. Here are some tips to ensure you're receiving the maximum benefits you're entitled to. First and foremost, it's crucial to ensure that you're actually receiving all the payments you're entitled to. The government will automatically enroll you if they determine you qualify, but it's still a good idea to periodically check your bank statements or pension statements to confirm that the correct GIs, allowance or allowance for the survivor amounts are being deposited each month. If you notice any discrepancies or feel like you should be receiving more, don't hesitate to contact Service Canada to inquire about your eligibility and payment amounts. Another important tip is to be vigilant about reporting changes in your income, marital status, or living arrangements. Remember, the government uses this information to continually reassess your eligibility, so staying on top of updates is key. In addition, try to time any major life changes like retirement or the death of a spouse to coincide with the start of the calendar year if possible. That way, the government can easily reevaluate your situation and adjust your benefits accordingly. It's also worth considering ways to strategically manage your income to maximize your eligibility for these programs. For example, if you're nearing retirement, you may want to explore options like delaying your CPP or RRSP withdrawals to keep your income below the GS thresholds. And if you're the lower earning spouse of an OAS or CPP recipient, make sure you're taking advantage of the allowance or allowance for the survivor if your income qualifies. Ultimately, the key is to stay proactive, vigilant, and take full advantage of all the government benefits you're entitled to. To help illustrate how these government benefit programs can make a real difference in people's lives, let's walk through a couple of hypothetical examples. In the first example, we have John and Mary, a retired couple who are both 70 years old. John receives the maximum OAS pension of $669.98 per month, while Mary receives a smaller CPP pension of $450 per month, their combined annual income from these government benefits is $13,440, which is below the $25,728.728 income threshold for a married common law couple. As a result, they would both qualify for the guaranteed income supplement. Assuming they receive the maximum GI's amounts, John would get an additional $616.76 per month, while Mary would get $390.12 per month. That's a combined total of $1,006.88 in supplementary monthly income. With this GI support, John and Mary's total monthly income increases from $1,119.98 to $2,126.86-a nearly 90% boost. This extra money can make a huge difference in helping them afford essentials like housing, food, and medication. Without this support, they might struggle to meet these basic needs, but with the GIs, they can live their retirement years with much greater financial security. Now, let's consider Sarah, a 62-year-old widow whose husband passed away last year. Sarah was previously relying on her husband's OAS and CPPP benefits, but now she's living on her own with a modest income from her own CPP pension of $600 per month. Since Sarah's individual annual income of $7,200 is below the $25,776 threshold for the allowance for the survivor, she would qualify for the maximum monthly payment of $1,307.66. This allowance for the survivor payment would essentially triple Sarah's monthly income, increasing it from $600 to $1,907.66. This extra financial support could be a literal lifeline helping her cover rent, utilities, groceries, and other necessities during this difficult time. Without this assistance, Sarah might face significant financial hardship, but with the allowance for the survivor, she can maintain her independence and meet her basic needs without the constant worry of making ends meet. 
These are just two examples, but they illustrate the powerful impact that the guaranteed income supplement, the continuing from where we left off, the examples of John and Mary and Sarah clearly demonstrate how the guaranteed income supplement GI's allowance. An allowance for the survivor can have a transformative impact on the financial stability of low-income seniors in Canada. These programs do more than just provide additional income. They help to ensure that seniors can live their later years with dignity without the constant stress of financial insecurity. For John and Mary, the GI supplements their modest income, almost doubling what they would have otherwise received from their old age security OAA, security OAS and Canada pension plan CPP benefits. This extra income means they can afford essential expenses like housing, food and health care, which might otherwise be out of reach. The peace of mind that comes from knowing they can meet their basic needs allows them to enjoy their retirement more fully without the worry of financial strain. Similarly for Sarah, the allowance for the survivor provides critical support during a particularly vulnerable time. Losing a spouse is challenging enough without the added burden of financial instability. The significant increase in her monthly income, thanks to the allowance for the survivor, means she can maintain her independence and continue living in her own home, covering her daily expenses without having to rely on, on other forms of aid or reduce her quality of life. These examples highlight the broader impact of these programs on the quality of life for seniors. Beyond just the financial relief, these benefits contribute to better health outcomes, reduce stress, and an overall higher standard of living. When seniors are not preoccupied with how to pay for basic necessities, they can focus on enjoying their lives, participating in their communities, and staying connected with family and friends. However, maximizing the benefits from these programs requires awareness and proactive management. It's essential for recipients to regularly check that they are receiving the correct amounts and to promptly report any changes in their income or living situation. This vigilance ensures that they receive the maximum benefits they are entitled to and avoid any issues with overpayments which could later require repayment. Moreover, understanding how these benefits interact with other sources of income and carefully managing withdrawals from retirement accounts like RSPs can help seniors optimize their eligibility. For instance, delaying CPP or RRSP withdrawals until absolutely necessary can help keep income levels below the thresholds for GI's allowance or allowance for the survivor, thereby maximizing the benefits received. In conclusion, the Guaranteed Income Supplement, the Allowance, and the Allowance for the Survivor are vital programs that provide essential financial support to low-income Canadian seniors. These benefits not only help recipients meet their day-to-day -day needs, but also enhance their overall quality of life by reducing financial stress and enabling them to live with greater dignity and independence. If you or someone you know may qualify for these benefits, it's crucial to review your eligibility and take full advantage of these programs. The extra income can make a significant difference, ensuring that retirement years are lived with the security and peace of mind everyone deserves. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you found the information helpful. If you did, please consider liking, sharing, and subscribing to stay informed about other essential topics that could impact your financial well-being. As always, if you have any questions or need further information, don't hesitate to reach out. Take care, and I'll see you in the next video. Stay financially healthy.